Hey everyone, it's me, Devin Coombs, CPA, MBA, ex-Google, ex-Deloitte, lecturer at San Jose State and consultant in the Bay Area. And today I got a question from a student about understanding PE versus PEG ratios, and I wanted to dive straight into it. The core concept we want to cover here is how do you determine if a stock is a good deal or if it is fairly priced? There are a lot of different ways that you can value a real asset or a financial asset. PE and PEG ratios are just two of them, but they are widely used tools by top firms and investment banks. So these are really relevant to your everyday practice and understanding for investing or any company or job you go into. And so the PE ratio, you can think of this as the price tag. The price to earnings ratio tells you how many dollars you're paying for every dollar of a company's annual profit. You calculate this by taking your market price divided by your earnings per share. So an example here is if you have a $100 stock and it's earning $10 per share as its earnings per share, you would just take the 100 divided by the 10 and you'd get the PE ratio of 10. Seems simple enough. Let's look at a real example. And so you can see this is automatically calculated. So I looked at Microsoft stock here. And you can see the PE ratio is 37 approximately. So all they're doing is they're taking their $504 price divided by the earnings per share to calculate the PE ratio. You could say, do the same thing for Google. So we go to Google stock, we can look and you can see here, PE ratio of approximately 21. So the PE ratio for Google is less than Microsoft, which means it's potentially a better deal because it is at a better price. But that isn't the whole story, is it? Because the problem with the PE ratio is it's just the price tag. It doesn't tell you the potential in the future. That's why we have PEG. So a high PE may look expensive, but PE is just a snapshot in a point in time. It tells you nothing about a company's future growth. So a company with a PE of 40 might seem overpriced compared to one with a PE of 10, similar to the Microsoft versus Google example. So what you'd really want to do is determine the PEG. How is the price compared to the potential growth of the earnings of the company. So that's what we call the PEG ratio. And this is really determining, is the higher price worth it? This is your price to earnings to growth ratio. And it's really an upgrade of the price to earnings ratio. It tells you if the stock's price is justified by its profit growth. And so the formula here, is just one extra step, you take that PE ratio, and then you're gonna divide it by the annual profit growth rate. And this will help you have a barometer to figure out if the peg is a bargain. So if it's less than one, if it's equal to one, you could say it's fairly priced. And if it's greater than one, you could say that it's potentially expensive unless you can justify the pricing. And so let's see this in action. High growth can justify a high PE. So imagine a slow growth stock has a PE of 10 and a 5% growth rate. So even though it's a low PE, it has a really low growth rate. And so the peg of two means that you probably don't want to pay the price for this stock. And the way to think of this is this might be like your utility company, where the utility company might just be growing very slowly, a little higher than inflation. You don't really want to pay too much for them. While compared to, let's say, an NVIDIA, let's say a really high growth company has a PE of 40, but they're having a 40% year over year growth. That would actually be fairly priced, right? Like the price would justify the growth in the earnings. And so this is a good barometer to look at what the future value of the company will be over time rather than just the point in time of PE. But use both of these in your toolkit in order to determine if you are comfortable buying a share or not. I want to add one more concept in here before we get into the time value of money, which will be next week. These are theoretical valuation concepts. So even if you use a concept like PEG, price earnings ratio, you might pay something different, just like you might buy a house that costs more than you think it is worth today because you think the value of it will go over time or there's sentimental value to it. Companies make the same kinds of purchases. They might pay more for a company because they believe it will have more synergies. They believe that they will be able to create something greater than the sum of their parts if they acquire these other companies. Or other companies have competitive bids out that are higher than the PEG or the PE ratios would indicate are fair. And so when you are determining a fair value for a company or a real asset, you can't just look at any of these items in isolation. These are just tools to help you get a feeling if you're paying the right price or not. You would also want to look at does the acquisition or what are you buying, could that increase your capacity to make more money? Are there synergies that can justify making more money? What are the comparable costs? of acquiring companies and what are the benchmark ratios for acquiring similar companies in that industry? 
there are so many other tools and we're going to cover those all in this class. So hope that was valuable to you. Hope you enjoyed learning a little more about PE and PEG. And if you have any other questions, feel free to raise them and I'll make sure I make a video on it.